Yo guys, Phase Shifter here and welcome to another video. Yet another patch has landed on Steam for Lords of the Fallen. Patch 1.1.231, the third patch we've had in 48 hours, which is absolutely fantastic. It shows that the devs are really actively tweaking and acting upon the feedback that we as a community are giving them, which is fantastic. I think the picture they've put here is quite fitting because Pieta's sword has been nerfed that is something that is going to be a bit of a headline for this patch i think and i'll talk about that in a moment but other than that it appears to just be a few little balance tweaks here and there and also some further optimizations which should hopefully help even more people who are struggling with the way the game was performing or crashing for them so without any further ado let's get into it and have a little discussion around the points in this patch so greetings lamp bearers Thank you, everyone, for a fantastic reception to our ongoing plans for the game. Rest assured that compliments don't make us complacent. Quite the opposite. They keep igniting our commitment to all of you, especially now that our community has grown to 1 million copies sold worldwide. That's a brilliant achievement for Hex Games and CI Games. Sorry, Hexworks. Congratulations. Fantastic. I think they've got a very good game on their hands, and I think that is absolutely deserved. And the way they've behaved after this launch has been fantastic i often think you can tell a lot about a developer post game launch and this developer has really impressed me so far i know that some of you are perhaps feeling a little bit irritated by some decisions but i think we can all agree they are making an effort to engage with us as a community and are responding very swiftly to issues and feedback and whatnot so without any further ado let's delve into today's patch so ng plus Due to popular demand, we will allow players to activate the new NG plus zero mode from Vestiges tomorrow once they've completed the current game. So that's a little tweak on the Vestiges patch that they brought out yesterday, both for console and for PC. I've got videos for both of those patches if you want to have a look on the channel. And whilst you're there, smash that like button and drop me a subscription. That would help massively, folks. I'm really enjoying making content for you. Every little helps. Moving on with the patch, stability identified a particular post-process material permutation that certain GPUs could not handle. Okay, some more GPU support there, that's fantastic. Optimization adjusted the spawn distances for umbral parasites to reduce the number of active actors simultaneously in the revelation depths area. We have worked on in collaboration with hardware manufacturers to enhance the automatic graphics settings configuration. Okay, AI, fixed nav message in system for better support, umbral enemies on specific floating platform, refine the nav mesh on a specific turn at path of devotion that could mislead AIs to dead end, to a dead end rather, potentially causing them to get stuck, refine the nav mesh at the bottom of Pilgrim's Perch, allowing AI to traverse thin wooden planks that could pre previously be used as a safe spot, I think I know what that is, that was there. Uh, a place I was using on my playthrough where the, the guys with the spiky heads were unable to come and get you sort of near where the um, near where you use your lantern to open up the way to get into the, the depths area where the elevator is, where you get the blacksmith from. I think that's what that's referring to there. Fix an issue with sparrows getting stuck under specific conditions on the man supply elevator lift. Re-enable the lock-on feature for ambush enemies in Upper Calraf. Okay. There is also a boss mention there. I'm not going to read that out loud because I don't want to spoil people. Balancing. This is an area that is going to be of interest to everybody, particularly this bottom one regarding Pieta's sword. So, the amount of healing from killing an enemy with the Ring of Nourishment equipped has been increased from 5 to 15, so a buff on that item if you're looking for Life Leech. Umbral Egg Health reduced from 205 to 166. They've increased the Pilgrim's Perch Key buy price from 9,500 to 18,000, as we noticed that some early game players were attempting to grind for it, only to discover that they didn't have the appropriate level for the area. So this is going to be a bit of an issue, I think, for people who speed run. I've actually just seen a comment mention this as a problem because it's going to be irritating for them in terms of getting things going in that respect. I guess we can't just cater for speedrunners, but it's certainly something to consider if you are one. We noticed that endgame players were not relying on parry as much towards the end of the game. That's why we've reduced the maximum stagger health region scaler in NG plus and normal gameplay from 1.5 to 1.25. Interesting. So that's going to hopefully try and shake up the way people are playing moment to moment. 
Previous strikes, damage output increased on some weapon families, especially heavy weapons and fists. Okay, so that should encourage us to use those a little bit more, which is nice. I guess that's a bit of a buff. Scaler for over level players increased by 50% to make over level clients deal more appropriate damage. Okay, very good. And then this one is the one that I want to talk about in a little bit more detail. To shake up the meta for PvP, Pieta Light Short Sword received nerf to poise and posture damage dealt while the Judge Cleric Spear received a buff to smite damage dealt. So I've been testing this this morning and I don't believe, and it might be because I haven't played for a day or so, there is no longer any smite procs for me when I'm using Pieta's Sword, which is a massive damage nerf. I've also considered how the vast majority of people have been using Pieta's Sword from the early game with PvE in mind, and I think it is absolutely rickrolling most of the game. It seems to be a bit of a crutch for new players, and I guess I feel a bit mixed about it. I've been using it. I think it's a nice, nice thing to use. Um, I was kind of looking to see what would be a good starting build for people who were new to souls likes and, and it was what i lent into so the build that i've created the radiance paladin build up to level 50 the build guides on the channel folks i don't think that is going to be as viable the sword is still going to be very good in the early game it's still got good reach and it's still got a good attack speed and it does have a decent base damage at the beginning I don't think it's appropriate to have a weapon at the start of a game that just absolutely rick rolls everything. So sound off in the comments below and let me know what you think on that one, folks. But I think it's probably a good change. On to level design. Discovering a secret temple in a hidden location now displays the temple's name in a more prominent position. Added an additional void volume at the Empyrean to prevent players from falling too long at certain spots. And then they've gone on to change lots of collision issues so i know there's been a lot of these i know i've seen people putting up shorts of this and that sort of thing and a lot of people kind of falling through the floor and things like that so this looks like they are heading in the right direction with this i won't go through these you can read the patch notes which i'll put in the description below elevators elevator doors now have a brief delay before they start moving up or down allowing players to exit before they begin moving this change provides players with a chance to reset the elevators for their next respawn I think this is a really good change and um, i also had problems with elevator elevator buttons whilst i was on my playthrough the uh the elevators were just too snappy so if you accidentally stood on a button you just get pulled straight back up to the top or the bottom of where you were and that caught me out multiple times and was becoming quite frustrating but beware elevators still have an attitude and this cannot be fixed as we've seen in the gif below there quite a frustrating moment for them i'm sure Visuals, fixed material in some umbral statues in Lower Kalrath, Mines District. And then we've got some UI tweaks, moved the resolution scale to graphic settings. The catalyst spell power statistic is now displayed in the inventory tab. Resolved an issue that could occur when character slots were full and the player overwrote one of the old characters. We've hidden the health bars of enemies that receive damage off screen to avoid seeing them in boss fight rooms or unintended locations. That's a good one. And then they've resolved an audio issue where some ambient sounds could stop playing under certain conditions in light we walk so there you have it folks let me know what you think about this patch i think that obviously the optimizations are a great touch they're obviously really really focusing on getting this game running as well as possible i think the main thing here is the balancing that they're doing mainly the pilgrim's perch key price increasing and also Pieta's sword being nerfed. This is the main headline of this patch. What do we think, folks? Sound off in the comments below. Please do smash that like button. Please do share this content with your friends and your communities. As many eyes on this as possible really helps me, and I really appreciate all the support you've been giving me. So until the next one, take care of yourselves, have a good day, and I'll see you in the next one, guys.